What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another episode of 1985 The Mice of the Five Lives A Daughter Died A Killer Unidentified Through Genocide. Yeah, if you didn't know, that's actually the first few lyrics of a song that I wrote a while ago. It's on Spotify, it's on YouTube. I'm thinking that I might remaster that song as well for a few reasons. Firstly, I kind of want to make more music, and I think I'm actually going to as well, but one of the main reasons I want to remaster it is because the first lyric is literally wrong. 1985, Demise of the Five Lives. I've seen this type of conversation go around my Discord server quite a bit, discussing the real date of the missing children's incident. Since the release of the Fazbear Frights books, um, a lot of people, including me at first, I'll have, to, I'll have to point that out, including me, have taken the year 1985 quite literally. And today I'm going to clear up some misconceptions about the books and provide a viewpoint that I hope many of you are going to agree with. So, without further ado, let's start the video. So let's place down some foundation in the timeline and think about where the missing children's incident could fall relative to that. I think one point on our timeline that we 100% know is true in this certain date is the bite of 83 in 1983. I mean, the year is in the name. I guess the question we have from this is, does the missing children's incident take place before or after the bite? It's quite a good question, and one that I myself have been wondering for quite a long time, actually. Um, it's quite difficult, because FNAF has a whole lot of events that occur all around the same time, then there's suddenly a huge gap, and then loads of law significance in 2023. The reason I say this is because 1983 is a huge date in the FNAF law. Not only do we have the bite of 83, but we have Full Fest 83, and it's the year that Fazbear Entertainment was first established. We also have Elizabeth's death, which I can only assume took place before the bite because of the absence of her in the minigames, the mangle in the room, and even the fact that some of the first animatronics were built by William Afton. And these animatronics had claw mechanisms, a little bit like Circus Baby. I'd say that the first half of the FNAF timeline is a lot less clear than the second half, so it's difficult to place any dates really at all. Um, so what's the date of the Bite of 83? My only real guess to this is Halloween, the 31st of October 1983. And one of the main reasons I say this is because of Full Fest 83. Remember that this was the whole premise of the Curse of Dreadbear DLC. Also recall that FNAF VR, including Dreadbear, was just a VR game by Fazbear Entertainment. However, a lot of the events were based on things that happened in real life. And we know that Full Fest happened in real life because of the posters that we see in FNAF 6. At this point, I'm just saying a lot of what Underscore has said in his video on all of this, uh, which you should go and watch. In the novel trilogy, Charlie actually goes missing on Halloween of 1983, and you'll find that by watching that video, there are a lot of similarities between the bite and this Halloween in particular. Uh, there's a lot of parallels. Even the fact that this poster symbolizes the Afton family and who they were at the time. William was puppeteering Michael, who looks like his father, while Elizabeth was now possessing a clown and the crying child was now possessing a bear. With all that in place, let's put the bite on Halloween. And I know that a lot of people aren't going to be happy with that. I know that I'm going to get a lot of hate comments uh, down there. but. We're just doing this so that we can try and establish some sort of timeline. Um, so if you have a different opinion, just say so in the comments. No need to be toxic though. Now we do know that 1983 was the year that Fred Bears and Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria co coincided with each other. Both were open at the time. We know that the bite was at Fred Bears in 1983 and we know that Fred Bear and his friends were popular in that year. However, before that year, we can't be sure because 1983 is the earliest year we've really had in this franchise. Seeing as we know that the missing children's incident took place on June the 26th of some year, that would really mean it's in 1983 or it's some year after the bite. And one year springs straight to mind, 1985. If I recall correctly, we've seen this year pop up twice in the Fazbear Frights universe and I also want to quickly point out that this is the only year that has been explicitly stated in these books. Firstly in Into the Pit, Oswald jumps in the pit 
and travels back to the year 1985. While he's in 1985, he sees six children killed by Spring Bonnie in the back room. We will talk about this all a little bit more in a minute. The second instance we've seen was in Sergio's Lucky Day. He goes to an event with his old class from school and they are blatantly titled the class of 85. Now, while I think that's kind of cool and I got excited when I saw the year 1985 again, I don't think this is anything. This has no connection to the missing children's incident in any way and I, I think this is actually supposed to tie into the next book, Friendly Face, with homecoming Queen Jessica. Outside the Fazbear Frights books and back into the trilogy, the events actually occur in 1995, a whole 10 years after the missing children's incident in that book. However, over all this evidence for it taking place in 1985, I do have two huge problems. First of all is how we use the books in aid of supporting evidence in the games. The games are canon to the trilogy. The trilogy is canon to Fazbear Frights, and the Fazbear Frights are canon to the games, and vice versa. However, they are three separate continuities. What that means is we can imagine three straight lines. These lines are timelines from the separate continuities. We can't merge timelines, we can't cut out one part of a timeline and stick it into another. It's just something that we can't do. What we can do is look for information and parallelism within these continuities and from that quite literally draw parallels. Now, I wish that these were called perpendiculars, but you get what I mean. So what this doesn't mean is that we can take a year like 1985 and just cut it out and insert it into the main timeline. That is cutting and pasting when we need to be making parallels. My second huge issue uh, relates back to Into the Pit. Uh, yes, we have 1985. Yes, we have missing children, but that's about all we've got. Instead of five kids, we've got six. Plus, we don't even know if this entire time travel situation is real or not. And this is why I am a firm believer that the missing children's incident takes place on the 26th of June, 1983. At the end of FNAF 4, we see the bite victim's friends talk to him. Friends. Now, this can be taken two ways. Yes, he called the plushies his friends before, as maybe they are literally his only friends. Uh, we don't see, uh, we, we see a lot of people bully him in that game. But also he could have been friends with the missing children before they even went missing. And they could literally be speaking to him at this moment. I don't think it's out of the question that Cassidy possesses the Fredbear plush. But you guys talk about it in the comments. Actually, something really weird just popped into my head. You remember Coming Home, the story Coming Home? For anybody who's read Coming Home, you would know that souls can be, I wouldn't say in two places, but you can have like two kinds of souls. It's really difficult to explain. But one in, in Coming Home, Susie's soul can be in Chica, and then that's a bad soul and stuff, uh, and she gets taken away with that soul at night or whatever. But there's also like the good soul that sticks around. I wonder if that could kind of work with these missing children. Like the missing children's souls are still around the um, the bite victim while at night they're in the animatronics. I wonder if that's, that's just a mini theory. Um, but again, talk about it in the comments. One huge piece of evidence I do have, however, is that this girl literally tells the crying child that they stuff children into suits. How and why would she know that? My personal opinion is that she knows because a few months ago there was a missing children's incident. It's possible that the bite victim even saw this incident happen and that's why he's afraid of the animatronics. I want you guys to tell me what you think about all this. At the moment I'm a firm believer that it all happened before the bite in 1983, but what do you believe? You can talk about it in the comments or in my discord, but please, please, please don't be toxic. Uh, be nice to each other and respect each other's opinions. At the end of the day, these are all just theories and we don't need to get caught up in this stupid video game. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I will see you all later. Goodbye.